Hello, it is July 13th, 2020, and I'm continuing our discussion of how much money, how do you find out how much money you should get or are going to be getting from the former family residence. We're going to make this very, very simple. I have talked previously about how to determine the fair market value of the house. We're going to assume that the fair market value of the former family residence has been established. And I want you to know, in all of this, we're assuming that the former family residence is a place that you owned, that one or both of you owned. Now, today we're talking about a former family residence that is held by the community, and we're talking about how to distribute the proceeds or the equity from a community held real property parcel. Okay, again, this is this is the former family residence. We are not talking about how to distribute the equity or the community's interest in a parcel in which one party had title and which was never community in nature. The community does have a buy-in to that, but that's a whole different discussion for a whole different day. So we're going to start with the community property residence that the community has been living in and paying the mortgage for, so on and so forth. We start with the fair market value, whatever number that is, we start with that. Then we deduct from the fair market value all of the liens, the mortgage, if there's a mortgage that is secured against the house, we deduct that. If there is a, a home equity line of credit, we deduct that. If there are tax liens or there are judgment liens, all that stuff that is secured against the house gets deducted first because that has to be paid. You don't get to distribute any equity. You don't get to refinance the house for a distribution of equity until these things are paid. So now we have a number. We've deducted all of that from the fair, the fair market value. Now, if there is a fair rental value factor, this becomes one of the things that people are going to tend to argue about. I'm not going to go into all of this. Some attorneys will tell you it's largely discretionary. The law says it's discretionary. Most of the judges feel that in the absence of very, very proscribed certain circumstances, that it would be an abuse of that discretion not to deal with the fair rental value. Keep that in mind. This is an area of argument which means it's an area in dispute, but it must be taken into account by any competent counsel. The next thing we have to consider is what is the separate property estate worth here? Did either party contribute any separate property income or any income from a separate property source to the property? Did they you know, use a gift from his or her parents to, to put into the down payment? Did they have a house prior to marriage that they rolled into this house? that was purchased during marriage? Uh, were improvements made with separate property monies? We determined the separate property estate because the separate property estate, the separate property's interest in the community property home gets returned first. Okay, that comes off the top as well. Now, having done all those deductions, we have a number for what is the community's equity in the property. That is the number that gets distributed. Some clients get confused or some, some other parties get confused because they think, well, no, it, it's, the, it's, it's ours. It's held in both our names. I should get half the equity. No, you get half of the community's interest in that equity. Once the community's equity is determined, you get half of that. But if there is a significant portion of separate property or if you have been spending your equity as you go, by staying in the former family residence and, and not paying a mortgage or not making payments commensurate with the fair rental value, you can find you're going to get far, far less than you had anticipated. This is a discussion that you need to have early, early with your attorney of record. A dissolution of marriage is a, it can be, can be in many cases a very strategic process and every decision you make from the beginning of your case is going to affect the end of your case. So talk to competent counsel, talk to someone who knows what they're doing, and if they don't know the very basics that I have given you here, then you need to be speaking with a different attorney. I hope you have a good day, I hope you have a good week, and I will be talking to you next about how to determine 
the community's buy-in to a separate property, former family residence. Thank you. Bye-bye.